Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of Heart Shaped Box by Joe Hill. So this was a buddy read. I buddy read this with Melissa, which is Night Fear here on YouTube, and also with Lou G as well. So shout out to those two. And I'm going to read you the blur before we get into it. When Judas Coyne heard someone was selling a ghost on the internet, there was no question. It was perfect for his collection of the macabre, the cannibal's cookbook, the witch's confession, the authentic snuff movie. As an aging death metal rock god, buying a poltergeist almost qualifies as a business expense. But this ghost, delivered to his doorstep in a black heart-shaped box, is different. It makes the house feel cold, it makes the dogs bark, and it means to chase Jude from his home and make him run for his life. So, I know of Joe Hill basically as Stephen King's son. I've never actually read any of his books before, so this is the first one of them that I've read. It's also his second published book. His first one was a collection of uh, short stories. And I really enjoyed this. So, uh, for, for a start, let me get it straight out of the way. It's probably my book of the month so far, at least at the time of filming. Now, I really liked Judas Coyne as a character. I thought he was a pretty decent, like, complex character. He's this aging rocker, you know. But it didn't just sort of pay lip service to that kind of thing. It felt as if it had almost been written by an aging rocker. So... Coin felt really real as a character, and even though he wasn't the nicest guy, like, he was very consistent with the way that he acted, and you really could kind of picture him. You, he, he's the kind of character I imagine, like, wrote himself and wrote his own dialogue, and, and Joe Hill didn't have to worry too much about it, because he's that kind of, that strong of a character. But equally, the female characters in this were very strong female characters even though they were very kind of damaged as well. I mean, he basically, he's an aging rock god, and he's kind of sleeping with these sort of young girls in their 20s who have been, you know, sexually abused, or they've ran away from home and got into drugs and this kind of stuff. They're almost like the rock and roll cliche, but even then they still feel very real as these characters. Like, the like him as the main male character, and then both of the two female characters, so Georgia and Florida, because he, he names his... Uh, this, this tells you a lot about the kind of guy he is. He names his girlfriends, nicknames them after the states they're from, you know? And, um... But it, it's done really tastefully, and in, you know, there's character development at the, at the end as well, so by the end of it, Coin is kind of learned that he needs to stop being such an asshole to these women basically and Mary Beth who is Georgia has kind of learned a lot about herself but also we even learn about the uh, the, the woman he was seeing before her who uh, committed suicide and we learn a lot more about her that makes her it, it shows her to be more more than just the kind of the cliche rock and roll heroin girl or whatever you know and I really appreciated that I, I think it's kind of important that he got that right and he did the ghost in this Jesus Christ so basically he gets his uh, personal assistant to buy this ghost for him and this ghost arrives in a, in a cardboard box in a heart-shaped box and uh, again that's a nod to the Nirvana song so you got a lot of different musical kind of references that work well he had coin as well he had an accident when he was a kid and so he had to switch from playing left-handed to playing right-handed because he couldn't make the chords with this hand so and that kind of comes into play again towards the end of the book as well which was pretty cool but the ghost the ghost was terrifying so the ghost is basically the stepfather of this ex-girlfriend of his who's committed suicide and ostensibly what's going on is that coin has been tricked into buying this ghost so that the old man kind of then haunts him and uh, he, the old man wants to get revenge for this, this former girlfriend of his that committed suicide. But the ghost is so sinister. I'll probably read some passages out. But one of the things, for example, he had like scribbled out crosses over his eyes, which really freaks me out. He was appearing in mirrors and stuff, which again, really freaks me out. I had some pretty weird messed up dreams while I was reading this book, which is probably because of this. It was just a good creep book it's not often that like a horror novel actually does freak me out and this one definitely did that we have some quotes here as well and bear in mind when this was published this was published in 2007 but this quote is arguably more relevant than ever people wondered how something like Columbine could happen Jude wondered why it didn't happen more often. Okay, I'm gonna read you a little quote here. And one of the things I like as well is this is like 60 pages in, so it doesn't take forever with a long setup before the ghost actually comes into play. So I'll read this to you. 
He looked down at the ghost, and at the same time the dead man lifted his head and his eyes rolled open, but where his eyes belonged was only a black scribble. It was as if a child had taken a magic marker, a truly magic marker, one that could draw right on the air, and had desperately tried to ink over them. The black lines squirmed and tangled amongst one another, worms tied into a knot. The dead man smiled at him, a thin, joyless smile, lips clamped together. Then Jude was past him, shoving Georgia down the hallway while she struggled and whined. When he was at the door to the bedroom, he looked back. The ghost came to his feet and as he rose, his legs moved out of the sunlight and painted themselves back into being. The long black trouser legs, the sharp crease in his pants. The dead man held his right arm out to the side. The palm turned towards the floor and something fell from the hand. A flat silver pendant, polished to a mirror brightness, attached to a foot of delicate gold chain. No, not a pendant, but a curved blade of some kind. It was like a doll's house version of the pendulum in that story by Edgar Allan Poe. The gold chain was connected to a ring around one of his fingers, a wedding ring, and the razor was what he had married. He allowed Jude to look at it for a moment and then twitched his wrist, a child doing a trick with a yo-yo, and the little curved razor leapt into his hand. We get some creepy stuff as well, so he gets an email from the dead guy. I'm going to read out the email. The uh, guy, he used to work doing psychological operations in Vietnam as well, so this is all part of it, you know. So we have this email. Dear Jude, we will ride at nightfall. We will ride to the hole. I am dead. You will die. Anyone who gets too close will be infected with the death on you. Us. We are infected together. We will be in the death hole together. And the grave dirt will fall in on top of us. La la la. The dead pull the living down. If anyone tries to help you, I, us, we will pull them down and step on them. And no one climbs out because the hole is too deep and the dirt falls too fast. And everyone who hears your voice will know it is true. Jude is dead and I am dead and you will die. You will hear my our voice and we will ride together on the night road to the place the final place where the wind cries for you for us we will walk to the edge of the hole we will fall in holding each other we will fall sing for us sing at our at your grave sing la 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 just creepy it's just creepy we have this moment where he realizes he might be able to sell the suit on and the ghost might then have to follow the suit to the new buyer and because uh, he gets the dead man suit in the heart-shaped box and uh, then Mary Beth burns the suit and he's like, what are you doing? Then he gets a call from his uh, former assistant because his former assistant kind of moves away, uh, runs away. He's like, I'm not sticking around for this. And he gets his call and his former guy, he goes, I figured it out, chief, how I got here out on the road in the dark. How's that? I killed myself. I hung myself a couple of hours ago. This road in the dark, this is dead. My mother hung herself just the same way. She did a better job though, she broke her neck, died instantly. I lost my nerve at the last second. I didn't fall hard enough, I strangled to death. And we do find out later that this actually happened. He did kill himself and then presumably he did get a call from the dead guy. Then he's watching a TV report and uh, the host goes, rock star Judas Coyne is dead. Late this afternoon, a spokesman for the Dutchess County Sheriff's Department confirmed that Judas Coyne, the international superstar and lead singer of Jude's Hammer, apparently shot and killed his girlfriend, Mary Beth Stacy Kimball, before turning the weapon on himself and taking his own life. And it's just, can you imagine how surreal that must be, you know? There's a great quote here. He had tried to explain the way he felt to Danny once about compulsive behaviour and time rushing too fast and the internet and drugs. Danny had only lifted one of his slender, mobile eyebrows and stared at him in smirking confusion. Danny did not think Coke and computers were anything alike. But Jude had seen the way people hunched over their screens, clicking the refresh button again and again, waiting for some crucial if meaningless hit of information, and he thought it was almost exactly the same. And this was written in 2007, so you could argue that it's even more true today, you know. He also gets a phone call from one of his former band members who died. It's just very sinister. And there's also a big twist about two thirds of the way through that did take me by surprise as well, although I don't want to talk about that because I do think you should go out and read this one. I really enjoyed this. My computer's pinging at me. Stop pinging. So on that note, it's rating time and I'm going to rate this a pretty solid 4.5 out of 5. I imagine this will make it into my top 10 books of Q3. And uh, yeah, I look forward to reading more books by Joe Hill. I would definitely recommend it if you like horror and that kind of stuff and ghosts and rock music so on that note thanks a lot for watching don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so what you thought of it hit that like button if you've enjoyed this review hit subscribe for more and i'll see you soon for another bookish video thanks a lot Bye bye